hi, microwaves interfere with Wi-Fi. That is probably the first thing you heard when you learned about Wi-Fi. But why and how? Let us analyze this a bit further, have some fun with some of my favorite tools and see what happens when you turn on a microwave. Before even talking more about the microwave, let us talk briefly about Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is half duplex, fight me, meaning that no radios on the same channel or frequency should be able to send at the same time. And how it does this is by using something called Clear Channel Assessment, or CCA. Before any radio is allowed to send traffic, again, it has to listen to ensure that no one else is transmitting on the same channel or frequency. It has to check if the medium is idle. When two radios would send at the same time, it could create collisions and traffic would have to be resent. Right? So in the dot .11 standard, they define physical carry sense mechanism to determine if the medium is busy or not. So let us think that the world is made of static values. Here from the standard, for for any dot .11 traffic, the radio should set the CCA to busy if it hears any traffic above the minimum modulation and coding rate sensitivity threshold at minus 82 dBm. Remember that radios can hear better than this, so a typical value will be around 4 dB above the noise floor. For any other traffic, meaning non-Wi-Fi, the threshold is 20 dB above the minimum modulation encoding rate, uh, meaning minus 62 dBm for a 20 MHz channel, and minus 59 for a 40 MHz channel, and minus 56 for 80 and 160 MHz channels. This means, in a world of static values, if I was able to make a jamming signal at minus 63, with 100% utilization, I would raise the noise floor, we're gonna look at that soon, but the radios will still try to send. But the signal to, re signal to noise ratio will be so bad that all traffic will collide and radios will struggle to hear each other. We're gonna see a demo of that uh, later in the video. Uh, but first, let's just see it in Aronia, for example, to simulate how a lot of noise would look like before we do the demo about the microwave. Here you have Aronia, where I'm using the IQ signal, signal generator to generate a 16 qualm signal. I've used uh, the IQ histogram 3D so I can get a good uh, 3D representation of the signal. And now it's uh, not enough uh, noise, but I think this tool is uh, great to visualize what would happen if we were able to create uh, a lot of noise floor. Because again, if you raise the noise floor, uh, it would be harder the the harder for radios to understand each other because the SNR or signal to noise ratio would be uh, lower. And also, if the noise are too loud. Um, it would create issues like a lot of colli uh, colliding traffic and most likely clients wouldn't even be able to send any traffic because they will set their CCA to busy. Uh, so let's just use this tool to create some noise to just visualize it uh, quickly. Uh, so let us uh, use this 3D representation to say, well, I can fully understand uh, these points and I can fully understand the signal. So I'm trying to generate a little bit noise here. Now I'm at minus 60. So now I'm above the CCA BC threshold. And then I'm going to create like a, a jamming signal. Let's say it's right at the top of the signal, maybe a little bit higher. And then suddenly it's so much noise that the signal just get literally buried inside of all the noise. So it's really hard for clients to even understand anything really. Uh, 
this isn't the exact same thing that happens to a microwave, but a microwave do create some sort of interference on 2.4 gigahertz. I'm going to look at that soon. I just thought that this was a cool representation to see what happens if you do generate a lot of noise uh, on Wi-Fi. So I can bring the noise down and you will be able to read the signal again. So now back to the demo about what will happen if I turn on my microwave. Welcome to my microwave oven. Uh, I will show you more after this video, but I was able to, to do something fun here. Uh, so I've set it to, to just 900 watts. That does not mean there's 900 watts or 900,000 milliwatts coming out of this, um, uh, of this microwave. There is some leakage, okay? So it's nothing to be afraid about. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna start uh, the video. And the noise you hear in the background is, of course, the microwave and a fan inside running. And uh, yeah, this is just Matt's, Matt Watson on, uh, on Carwile. As you see, the Running pretty great. Uh, CCA is not busy yet. Maybe a lot of retro rates. And let's just see what happens. Yeah. Hmm. Now it just stopped. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to open the door so the microwave stops and see what happens. It works again. <laughs> well, uh, short demo there. Uh, now I'm going to see how it looked in a, in a spectrum analyzer and how it looked like in Metagig Tonic. Here we have Cisco Spectrum Expert, another cool tool. Um, reason for me using this because I don't have any Spectrum V6, uh, but this is the next uh, great uh, best thing I have. And this is the Cisco Spectrum Expert. This is an old recording of the same microwave I used in the video where it's where the video stopped. And now we're just going to look at uh, to see how it looks. Uh, so this is just a recording. Uh, it records on uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz. And then you see in this FTT duty cycle here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make myself a little bit more tiny. There. And you see in the FTT duty cycle that even though we have a lot of traffic here and it looks pretty awful down here in uh, the waterfall, there is not so much uh, utilization uh, or duty cycle yet, right? So just wait when we turn on the microwave oven. Now, uh, you see a really high spike act uh, around channel 6 and channel uh, 13 almost and um, yeah this is a pretty nice and beautiful uh, waveform we have here uh, with the Cisco Spectrum Expert just to see how much noise a, a microwave creates so how I got my my Chromecast video to stop was that I set it uh, the radio uh, to uh, channel six uh, static on channel one. It works great because it doesn't hit channel one so much, even if it looks like that in the waterfall. But if I set something on channel six. Usually the video, uh, if I put my Chromecast TV right next to the microwave, it usually stops. Uh, yeah, so this was a, a cool recording um, uh, using Cisco Spectrum Expert just to see uh, the microwave. Uh, the cool thing about this tool, I can just stop the signal. Oh, sorry, it's played. 
uh, find and pause it. So you have like a cool screenshot to see how it looks. And you can change um, a lot of variables for each panel here. So yeah, it's a, a great little tool to, to see it. But uh, I, I talked a little bit about uh, retry rates, right? And I can, uh, we can see a recording I did with Metageek Tonic. There's a lot of tools in this video <laughs> where we can see uh, pretty clearly when I turn on the microwave. So next tool now. So here is yet another tool, Metageek Tonic. So I talked about the CCA busy state, right? Uh, since the microwave would also raise the noise floor, but if it was below the 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 minus the static value of minus 62, where the client or radio should set their CCA to busy for non-Wi-Fi traffic, what would happen if it did not send the CCA to busy? it would just keep on sending traffic. Uh, then I explained that you could see a lot of retry rates, right? So we're gonna take a look uh, in this tool now because I did make this capture at the same time when I did the video uh, of the, the Chromecast stopping. So I'm gonna take a look at this now. I think the client is here on this access point. And then it's this one, and, and then here uh, is a really cool representation because this is when I turn on the microwave. Here I stopped it. Here the video is still playing. This is when I turn on the microwave. And then I wanted to see validate this, so I turn on the microwave for 30 seconds on 900 watts, and this is what happens with with uh, retry rates. Uh, so this just explains that um, a, a client or radio would still try to send even if there's a lot of interference. So if you were to design so, uh, a wireless uh, wireless at a site. Uh, it's fairly important not to place your access point near any interfering devices, because if the because if the interference is loud enough, this could happen, and we don't have we don't just have uh, interfering devices in 2.4. We also have in 5, and most likely we have something in 6 gigahertz also. Um, so. Yeah, I think it was just a cool uh, demo. And since I've already showed so many tools, why not just show Hamina also to just take a look at a microwave. So let us look at that <laughs> also next. A microwave oven. Now this should represent <laughs> represent a microwave oven, uh, just so people should not be afraid of the microwave. Um, let's say this is uh, this is the the microwaves inside the microwave oven. Turn on Wi-Fi. Turn on 2.4 gigahertz, and so the most of the signal is just contained inside the microwave, but if you were able to slam the door shut again and again and again and again, you will get a little bit more leakage, but you will not get hundreds of watts of leakage uh, outside uh, your access point. Uh, so, but uh, using uh, tools like Hamina uh, is a cool way to just repre uh, represent how uh, how leakage would look like, because. Uh, a good thing is if I placed my my TV on the left here uh, on this side, uh, it would still work. But if I moved it a little bit, a little, little bit like uh, on the side, it would start to interfere. 
also, if I stand right in front of the microwave with my iPhone and I'm connected to 2.4 gigahertz, uh, it takes a couple of seconds and then it disassociates from the access point and I'm not able to rejoin the access point because of a PM kid uh, is failing. So I have to wait a bit. So that is quite fun. Uh, so yeah, just, just a little cool story showing a lot of cool tools uh, to just see how a microwave could interfere with wireless again only on 2.4 uh, so yeah don't use 2.4 and stand right in front of your microwave have a nice day